What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook and welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this modern floating bathroom vanity complete with soft closed drawers, integrated drawer pulls, and motion activated undermount LED lighting. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the build. All right guys, so before I got started out here in the shop, I started at the computer in SketchUp, which is the 3D modeling software I use, so I could figure out all of the parts and pieces for this bathroom vanity ahead of time. And I personally do this on every project because I end up making plans out of a lot of my projects, but I think it's especially important to think through some of this stuff on a bathroom vanity project like this because there's a lot of funky stuff to work around. You've got all of your plumbing. I'm gonna be installing this vanity up against two adjoining walls, and I'm gonna have some door trim to contend with. So it was a really good idea to kind of figure everything out beforehand. You'll see that even modeled in where the plumbing is so that I could work around that. And so now I have a full cut list for both the solid wood parts as well as the plywood parts. And I also went ahead and printed off some of the pictures of these sub assemblies since this is a pretty funky cabinet. It's essentially like a cabinet within a cabinet. And I guess now that I have this cut list, I can go ahead and head over to the table saw and get started breaking down some material. All right, so I got a few pieces cut to final size at the table saw, and I'm starting with these pieces because both of these pieces need to be edge banded and veneered, so I wanna go ahead and get a head start on that. So I milled up some of this hardwood edge banding out of this white oak, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued on here. So another tool I really like using when I'm doing this kind of hardwood edge banding are these Rockler bandy clamps. And these are essentially just spring clamps with this additional kind of rubber piece that adds pressure on the front edge of the edge banding while it dries. And it just makes this process go a lot easier. And I've had a lot of luck with using these bandy clamps over the years. So while the glue is drying on that hardwood edge banding, I can go ahead and start breaking down some more pieces of this project. And the next things I wanna work on are the hardwood drawer fronts. And ideally I'd like these to have kind of a continuous grain pattern. So next I'm gonna go ahead and pick out kind of which drawer fronts I can get out of these pieces of white oak that I have on hand. Uh, basically there's going to be a right bank of three smaller drawers and then the left bank with kind of a similar sized upper drawer and then kind of a double depth bottom drawer for larger items like cleaning supplies and a hair dryer and stuff like that. So I've gotten some more pieces milled down the size. First of all, the drawer fronts I was talking about earlier. Then I also went ahead and milled down the two pieces that are gonna make up the vanity top. And these are some kind of scrap pieces of ash I've had sitting around and they've got some real kind of funky color variation and knots and stuff like that. So I'm actually gonna end up painting this top, which I know might be sacrilege to some of you, but I think that kind of painted black ash top with kind of the natural white oak carcass and, and cabinet and drawer fronts is gonna look really cool. Uh, anyway, I need to go ahead and get these glue up but before I do that I am gonna go ahead and cut a couple of mortises for some floating tenons aka dominoes uh, again these are not for strength they're really just for alignment you could obviously use biscuits or dowels I say that all the time this is to keep these pieces in plane during the glue up so you don't have a lot of sanding to do afterwards so let's go ahead and cut those and then get these two pieces glued up So while the glue sets up on those pieces, I can continue breaking down all of the rest of the pieces. And I have a handful of solid wood parts left to break down for this kind of quasi face frame. I don't really know what to call some of these parts because I've never really built a cabinet like this before. But these are gonna be the strips that are behind where the kind of pulls are on the drawer fronts that will kind of give you an area to actually fit your fingers in. So I think it's kind of like a face frame, so that's what I'm gonna call it. But anyway, I can go ahead and get those cut to rough length here at the miter saw and then rip to rough width over at the table saw. All right, so as you can see, I've got all of the parts and pieces for this kind of web frame system cut to size, and now I need to start getting these pieces connected. And so once again, I'm gonna use uh, the domino, and I think I'm gonna try to squeeze in two dominoes per connection here. Probably should have made these like cross pieces a little bit wider because trying to put two here is a little on the tight side, but I still think it's gonna work. And as you can see, this creates this grid, so that way I can mount my drawer slides on these kind of stretcher pieces. And then this front piece, since it is 
solid oak does not need to be edge banded and veneered because I am going to be cutting dados into this for that kind of inset face frame, whatever you want to call it. I guess let's go ahead and get the joinery cut here and then I can get these web frame assemblies glued up. All right, so the last thing I wanna to do today is go ahead and get these two checks on the ends of these two ash boards that are gonna make up this countertop stabilized with some epoxy. And I think that's a great bit of insurance and will really help to keep these checks from growing over time. Also, since again, I am gonna be painting this, that epoxy will fill in these cracks as well, so it'll make for a nice smooth surface. So I'm gonna be using Total Boat High Performance. This is what I pretty much always use for this kind of crack and not filling. It sets up fast enough. It's easy to hand plane off the Excess, and I really like these pumps that allow you not to have to measure out your epoxy. You just do a one-to-one -one pump ratio, so it makes it super simple. All right, so back for day two. The epoxy has set up nice and rock hard, so that'll be easy to plane down and then sand down a little later. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and move over to the plywood pieces and get the veneering process started since we didn't get to that yesterday. So I went ahead and flushed up the hardwood edge banding on the router table. Typically I use a little trim router attachment for that and I really like that method. I think it works great, I get good results. Unfortunately my trim router is at the house so had to spend some time getting that setup dialed in on the router table. Now I'm ready to get to veneering and I'm using this veneer from Rockler and it's great because it's two ply so it's a lot less fragile than your typical veneer and it comes in these big rolls that are sized to kind of work with common cabinetry sizes. So what I need to do is go ahead and get these cut to rough length. I'm gonna leave them oversized in all directions by at least like a half an inch, just so I have plenty of wiggle room when installing this veneer, because I'm gonna be using contact cement, which as soon as the two surfaces touch, the contact cement grabs permanently. And <laughs> if you don't have a little wiggle room, it can be way more stressful than it needs to be. Also, one little pro tip here, when you're working on this kind of veneer that's rolled up super tight, as you saw <laughs> while I was cutting it, it was a little bit squirrely. You can help it flatten out by just spritzing the front face with a little bit of water and basically as it dries It'll reverse that curl and as you can see this piece is actually curling in the opposite direction I'm using this Wilson art water-based contact cement thinking I'm going to have to add two coats to this uh, Wood veneer since it's so porous. I think it's gonna kind of soak into that back layer So we'll do two coats let it set up It needs to be totally dry to the touch before I put the two surfaces together and I'll probably wait about 20 minutes between coats the contact adhesive has had a chance to set up. Basically, you'll know it's dry when you can touch it and it still feels a little tacky, but it doesn't like have strings coming off of it when you pull your finger away. To keep these two surfaces from touching, I like to use some aluminum bar clamps, basically kind of perfect to space it off the surface. The other nice thing is you can kind of use the clamps themselves as your edge guide. I think that looks pretty good. So I like to start in the middle and just pull out your first clamp. And then to really lock it in place, you want to use something like a pressure roller. And that is coming up. Uh-oh. That is not what should be happening. So that is not what's supposed to happen. I'm just guessing that maybe this is too dry. Again, these are both fairly porous surfaces. They're both wood. So I guess I'm gonna roll on one more quick coat, wait a little less time before I try to stick these together. And I guess let's try this again. I guess let's see what happens after 15 minutes. All right, I guess <laughs> let's try this again. Round two, here we go. So that was 15 minutes, so this seems to be working much better. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I definitely am not a huge fan of this particular contact cement. I've had this issue before where it just dries so quickly, you just don't really know exactly when to put the surfaces together. The reason I like it is because it has a lot less fumes, so it's a bit of a trade-off, but I would say your traditional contact cement, which smells like death, definitely works a little bit better. So I'm gonna repeat this process of trimming the edges flush with just a utility knife. That's a nice thing because it's a wood veneer, you don't really need to use a flush trim bit. It cuts super clean and I'm gonna let that dry for a while. 
All right, so I went ahead and got these web frames sanded up. I really just wanted to make sure they were nice and flush because now I'm gonna be cutting in the joinery for that kind of quasi face frame. So I also went ahead and marked out where I need to cut those dados on the front of these web frames. And the one real thing I need to pay attention to is that one of the dados is not cut on one of these web frames. So <laughs> I tried to do some clear layout work there. So hopefully I can keep track of that. So I installed a three quarter inch wide dado stack here. It's set to a three quarter inch depth as well. Basically, I'm just cutting these to fit those face frame pieces I cut earlier. And the nice thing is the face frame pieces are still kind of just roughed out. So if I make these a little bit too small, I can always just trim a little bit off of those face frame pieces. So that gives me a little bit of wiggle room to adjust my fit later. So the joinery on the web frames is cut. So now we can start getting some of this case assembled. There's gonna be these plywood stretchers that connect the top part of this. I'm gonna keep it super simple and just use screws. I'm using these special kind of MDF screws that I've used in previous videos. I love these things. They work great when going into like plywood edge grain. These are an inch and three quarters long, so that should be plenty long enough, plenty strong. And I'll put probably two or three of these per connection at each joint. While I'm working, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, HelloFresh. So HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit delivering fresh, pre-measured ingredients right to your door. If you're stuck in a recipe rut, you can add variety, simplicity, and ease to your cooking by making HelloFresh part of your back-to-school routine. You can also increase your HelloFresh box size, which we always do since we're a family of four, so you'll end up with easy leftovers for kid or adult lunches. HelloFresh's meal kits also help you save time and stress effortlessly as the average trip to the grocery store takes about 41 minutes minutes. But with HelloFresh, you can skip those trips and get everything you need delivered right to your door. HelloFresh also helps you eat more sustainably as their pre-proportioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less wasted food. Most importantly, HelloFresh's recipes are delicious and they have so many recipes to choose from each week. And as you can see, me and my little dude both loved this honey thyme pork tenderloin recipe I made. Mm. Thumbs up. <laughs> So to get started, go to HelloFresh.com and use code CRAFTEDWORKSHOP14 to get 14 free meals, including free shipping. And big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to the build. All right, so now that I have the outer carcass kind of assembled, I need to get this center divider added. And this can be kind of tricky when you don't have something like a dado to set the position. So what I like to do is just take some of the scraps from the pieces I had already been cutting and cut a couple of spacers. So then that way you have something to reference against. You can actually clamp them in place. Whoa. And that way you know you have the exact same spacing at all four corners, which should give you a nice and square cabinet box. And now that the whole carcass is assembled, I can go ahead and mark these face frame pieces to final length because I had left them oversized so that I had some wiggle room for trimming. And I'm gonna cut both of these longer face frame pieces to the same size so that way any kind of play, it'll be pulled in there. So that ended up being a pretty smooth glue up. Everything turned out great. I think the joints are nice and tight. And best part is that all of these kind of face frame openings came out nice and square, which is awesome. All right, so back for day three. Uh, as you guys saw, I already went ahead and sanded this kind of inner carcass. It's obviously gonna be a lot easier to sand those faces before it's kind of inside this outer carcass. So now I need to get the two pieces for this kind of outer cabinet connected, and I'm gonna connect these two with pocket screws. Obviously a great method for assembling cabinetry. I am using my trusty Craig Foreman to drill the pocket holes. Obviously not 100% necessary, but if you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. All right, now that I got those two carcasses put together, I can start doing some kind of finish prep work. The first thing I wanna do is go ahead and chamfer all of these edges that I have veneered because that's obviously gonna be a pretty fragile edge just naturally. And so I've gone ahead and set up a chamfer bit in my trim router here. 
I am gonna be adding that kind of filler strip basically because this cabinet is gonna be up against two walls. I made the kind of right side of this a filler strip so that way I can sand that down or plane that down once I get to the house to install it if I need to do any sort of tweaking. That should hopefully make my life a little bit easier once it comes time to install this thing. Uh, so now I wanna move on to the drawers. And so I'm using Bloom undermount slides which I basically use anytime I can. And I actually have an entire video on making drawers to go with these slides because there's some kind of specific details that you have to follow to make drawers that'll work with them. So I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here, but basically I make the drawer sides and fronts out of half inch plywood, make the drawer bottoms out of quarter inch plywood. I cut a rabbit for the bottom panel half an inch up from the bottom edge of the drawer sides. And then I also notched an area on the back of the drawer to accept these slides themselves. Now to install the slides in the cabinet and then get the drawers actually attached to the slides, that's a whole nother process and I use a couple of Rockler jigs for that. They make a pair of jigs that make this whole process way, way easier and I would highly recommend picking up the jigs if you work with these kind of slides with any regularity. And after I'm done with all that, the drawer boxes are installed just like this. All right, so as you can see, got all the drawers in and now I need to go ahead and get the drawer fronts fitted. And I left those completely oversized and rough because especially on a cabinet like this with inset drawer fronts, you really wanna just trim those to final size once you've built your cabinet. And I also need to get the bevel cut on the back top edge of these drawer fronts because that's gonna be the integrated drawer pull. So let's go get started on that. All right, so I chamfered the edges, did a lot, a lot of sanding, and now we're finally ready to get them attached to the drawer boxes. And so I really like to use uh, these eighth inch strips of HDPE. It's high density polyethylene, basically just super dense plastic. And so I already know that there's a little bit of extra slop even with these spacers in place, and that's where the old playing card trick comes in handy. So I just keep a deck of cards here at the shop for this very purpose, and it works awesome. I think I learned this trick from my buddy Brad over at Fix This Build That. Whoop. As you can see, nice and snug. This is gonna require a very long reach clamp. All right. <laughs> so I have this comically large metalworking clamp, which I think is just barely gonna fit. And then as far as screws to attach drawer fronts, I really like these one inch drawer front attachment screws from Rockler, they've got this huge washer head. So if you are gonna take your drawer fronts off and you need some repositioning, you can use these. They're one inch long, which is just about perfect for every drawer front application. I also really like these kind of gear clamps for this drawer front attachment because you can swing them in super quick. There you go. Whoop. <laughs> keep forgetting how short this drawer is. The one big difference with this front is that it's not actually gonna be a functional drawer. As you can see, there's no drawer behind it. And again, that's for the sink plumbing. So what I'm gonna do is cut a little filler piece of plywood here, just kind of pocket screw it in place. So then that way I can attach this drawer front to that from behind. And so then no one will ever know. All right, so now that all of the drawers and drawer fronts are in and working really well, love these undermount soft close slides there. So nice, I need to go ahead and get this top cleaned up. Obviously I still have all of this excess epoxy up here. I need to get it trimmed to final size. And I also need to cut the opening in the middle here for the vessel sink that I'm gonna be using. I'd rather do that now prior to finishing so then if anything gets screwed up, it can be fixed a lot more easily than if this thing had finish on it. So let's go ahead and get all of this cleaned up and get to work on that. All right, I got everything sanded up to 180 grit, I'm prepping for finish here. I also chamfered all the edges on this countertop. And so now I'm ready for finishing and I'm gonna use a couple different products here. First of all is this Halcyon Clear from Total Boat, which I've used quite a bit in the past. It is a marine varnish, so should be plenty durable enough for a bathroom. What I'm gonna do is put on two coats of the gloss and then one coat of the matte version. That works well because the gloss builds a little bit more quickly. And also if you do like three coats of just the matte version, matte finishes 
have these things called flatteners in them and that can kind of make things look a little bit muddy. So then for the countertop, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm gonna be painting it using their Elixir paint. Love this stuff, it's water-based, it dries super quick. Both of these products are water-based, so I should be able to get this thing mostly finished this afternoon. So I'm gonna spray the clear coat and then I'm gonna roll the paint, mostly just because I don't have two spray systems. So this paint lays out really nice rolling it. I've done that in the past a number of times. And uh, yeah, I'll do three coats of the paint as well. So as you can see, I got the vanity brought back here to the not so tiny house and have started the process of getting it installed. So the first thing I did was figure out where the studs were on this wall. And <laughs> it's a little tricky with this thick of a tile and kind of thin set bed on the wall. So I had to get a little bit clever and I actually just measured where the studs were on the other side of this wall and just transferred those measurements here in the bathroom since I knew they'd be at least pretty close. Once I had those locations figured out, I needed to figure out the height that I needed to mount my French cleat. And in case you didn't see it during the cabinet build, this back stretcher on the cabinet on the vanity is a French cleat. So that way I can get this thing installed a little bit easier since I'm working by myself. Unfortunately, because of the length of the French cleat and just where it landed with these studs, I was only able to go into one stud with it, but this was still enough to hold the cabinet up while I got it attached to the studs through the upper stretcher and lower stretcher on the cabinet. And I used about four screws in total, I used three inch long screws since I'm going through three quarter inch plywood, three eighths inch tile, a bed of thin set, and then the half inch foam wallboard. So the next thing I need to do is get the top fit and I guess let's take a look at that. All right, so to fit this top, I need to do a little bit of trimming. I purposely built it slightly oversized just so I could basically scribe it to fit. And the first step in that process was cutting it to final width. And I used my tracks off for that. I did add a little bit of painter's tape just to avoid any tear out, but tracks off is pretty good with tear out. So that went really smoothly. And then I needed to notch this corner here around this trim. Again, that was easy. I just set it in place, marked where I needed to trim it, extended those lines with a combination square, and then cut that out with a jigsaw. And now the top is fitting really nicely, but I need to figure out how I'm gonna get this attached to the cabinet because I didn't actually think through some of that back at the shop. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so as you'll notice, I added this extra piece back at the shop because I could, because I didn't need any plumbing clearance on that side. And I can just screw up through that into the top. That's easy. On this side, I'm actually just gonna drill a pocket hole right here because I didn't wanna add an extra piece here. I probably could have gotten away with it, but I was just a little worried about all of the plumbing clearance here. And then I can attach it at the front and the back through these stretchers. I will make those holes oversized to allow for a little bit of seasonal movement. And that way this will be pinned kind of permanently in the center. So so any movement will be coming from that center. So actually there is just an ever slight bow right here. So what I'm gonna do, that had a little clamping pressure. All right, with the top attached, the next step in the process was to get the sink and faucet installed. And the sink was simple enough to install. It comes with this kind of rubber gasket material that you apply to the underside. And then it attached with some kind of toggle bolts, I guess you'd call them, kind of similar to drywall toggle bolts. And then they go up into the base of the sink and then you tighten those down. And then there's also a set screw that further tightens it down and really compresses that gasket. So this should be a nice watertight seal. The drain was pretty simple to install. It's fairly similar to other drains I've used. I think this actually looks really nice, this kind of porcelain or ceramic insert here. The faucet installation was also super simple. It also had a little rubber gasket to again, keep it from leaking. Then it had more washers that connected on the underside of the sink. And I think this whole setup looks gorgeous. The sink and faucet are made by Duravit and they also make the wall hung toilet and the awesome bidet, which I'll be installing in next week's video. I'll link to both of these in the video description below but I think I mean obviously I built this vanity to go with this thing but I think the combination is absolutely gorgeous all right so the very last thing I want to do on this vanity besides a little caulking work and some other boring cleanup is get these LED strips installed on the underside and this kit I found on Amazon is super cool I'll link to it in the video description below but it's got a built-in motion sensor so that way it can turn on and off automatically you can also adjust the brightness and it'll run off of USB if you want to so what I'm gonna do is get one of those big kind of external battery packs and I'm thinking that should last for months at a time since really this is only ever gonna come on for you know 30 seconds at a time before it turns off and I'm just going to attach that battery bank with some velcro so I can recharge that when it needs to be. For 30 bucks I thought this was a pretty good setup and I think it should be perfect for in here. 
So a little bit of change of plans. These things evidently can't be cut. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to zigzag this back and forth across the bottom of this cabinet so that all of these strips are gonna be used. So let's see if I can figure that out. So my battery bank is inside charging right now. So it did come with a little power supply. So I'm just gonna plug it in temporarily, see what it looks like. Oh yes, that is sweet. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. All right, so now I can just use some of those included clips to do a little cable management and should be good to go there. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I am really happy with the way this whole thing came together. In next week's video, we're gonna be wrapping up this bathroom. I still have a lot to do in here. Most importantly, I need to get that wall hung toilet with that ridiculously fancy like $1,200 bidet installed. And I'm super excited to see how well that thing works and if it was worth the price tag. If it's your first time here, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. I also have links to all the tools and materials and this sink and faucet that I use down in the description below. Also, I will be making plans for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pre-sale up. So thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.